Good morning everyone! It's a beautiful Monday morning. Welcome to Mark Your Day. I hope you had a great weekend. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. Good morning, uh, Dean Henry Daot. Good morning, Mitzi. And to everyone who are hopping in to our show this morning, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. It's a beautiful Monday morning here in Metro Manila. The sun is up. Color coding scheme still uh, suspended. And life is slowly getting back to normal. How was your weekend, guys? I hope you have your coffee beside you. Good morning to our dear friends, Tita Lin Lin and Tito Alain Angeles. And all our friends from Villa Alfredo in Pampanga. Pampanga, by the way, is in the news today. Let's hear out what's uh, going on nationwide. It's going to be a packed Monday. I will be talking about something really, really important and you might want to invite your friends to join in the discussion. I will be opening the chat box to a lot of questions so I will be keeping my dialogue sh uh, short so you could throw in your questions. Welcome everyone. It's a beautiful Monday. To those who are new in the show, I am Mark Castrodes. I host this Monday to Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday show at 8 to 9 in the morning. Here we talk about the news, we talk about what's interesting, and we talk about what's trending on social media. This airs live on YouTube, on a social media uh, platform, Facebook, but it's also recorded on YouTube for those who need to catch it late or on replay. So today... We have a lot of news items waiting for us. What's in the news, my friends? But before that, I would like to put our attention to something really alarming and that I will be talking about later, which is the issue of sexual harassment in our schools. Meron daw pong napapabalitang mga batang na harass sa ating mga eskwelahan. So watch out for that as I talk about how we can prevent that and what do you need to know about that, especially to those who have teenage girls and teenage boys as well. If you want your kids to know what, what is sexual harassment and understand the elements of it, I will be talking about that in the latter portion of the show where we talk about what's trending. So I hope you, you do catch that because that's very, very important. Knowledge will be our shield against this and proper action as well. So why, let's not dilly-dally, let's go catch the news. In the news today, let's begin with the Philippine Daily Inquirer. Ang headline natin sa Philippine Daily Inquirer, DOH and the Armed Forces of the Philippines are sending doctors over to Cebu. The Department of Health will be pulling out some of the doctors for the barangays deployed in the, in the Visayas areas and moving them over to Cebu. The Armed Forces of the Philippines as well are gathering some of their health personnel and deploying them to Cebu just to supplement the healthcare force in Cebu who are trying to manage this crisis that's growing really fast in that area. So let's continue to pray for our doctors who will be facing this crisis. By the way, in the same article, the... LGU leaders lament the pull out of these doctors because these are from the doctors from the barangay program and if these doctors have been deploy deployed to some of the 
least served areas in terms of medical services and then you pull out the doctors, it will cause some concern. So the LGU leaders coming from those areas are some are requesting that for better coordination with the Department of Health for them to be informed of their plans ahead of time. And so, and what's in the photo? What's in that photo? Interesting, because a priest in Samar, while he's not busy with his religious duties in his church, he goes out to photograph birds. He is an avid member, uh, he is an avid uh, photographer of wildlife, particularly birds, and he believes that going into that hobby helps saves the environment. He picked that up when his dad also brought him along. And yes, he believes that birds are a barometer of the health of our environment. And if we have a healthy environment, the birds will thrive. A couple of weeks ago, I also read about a news article of sightings of the Philippine eagle in in Zamboanga City. And there's a growing number of Philippine eagles sighted in Zamboanga City, which uh, proves what this doctor, this uh, priest is saying, that if there are birds, meaning the environment is well. That's the headlines coming from the Philippine Daily Enquirer. Let's continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Cebu. Palakpakan po natin ang ating mga magigiting na doktor. Sana po protektahan sila ng Panginoon palakasin. I got news by the way of a of a dear dear friend who serves in the medical community of Cebu who who got a positive test for COVID but she's feeling well and we continue to pray for her. Uh, I'm I'm sure my friends know what I'm talking about so please do continue to pray for her. I'm I'm not at liberty to disclose her name. So, let's pray for all our health workers trying to manage this crisis in the many areas in the Philippines. So, that's our news headlines coming from the Philippine Daily Enquirer. Okay, let's move over to the news coming from the Philippine Star. In the headlines from the Philippine Star... The World Health Organization says the Philippine COVID cases rising fastest in the Western Pacific region. They track the number of positive cases given a particular period and they believe that the Philippines has the fastest growing number of cases. The Department of Health somehow responded to this saying that you can't really cherry pick and compare countries to countries. <coughs> Excuse me because the situation is different uh, from country to country. The um, Department of Health is saying that you can't compare the Philippines from Singapore. Singapore with 5.9 million residents or um, in that state, while the Philippines has over 100 million people. Infrastruction demographics are also different. But the senators are saying this report should be a wake-up call. Wake-up call daw po ito sa ating mga leaders na ayusin yung pag-manage ng crisis sa Pilipinas dahil hindi pwedeng maging complacent. Sabi po ni uh, Vice President Robredo, sabi din po ni Senator Pangilinan, it is a wake-up call. And ako as a leader, I will not take those criticisms lightly. I will take them seriously because any reminder on the part of or coming from the part of our citizens, whether they're elected or not, is good. It will help people wake up to their responsibilities and do those responsibilities well. So, should we deny that we don't have the fastest number of ca- growing number of cases? I don't think so. Dapat tanggapin yan, harapin yan, at ayusin yan. Tama naman yung sinasabi ng DOH na hindi pwede ikumpara. Pero tama din yung sinasabi ng World Health Organization na kailangan ayusin dahil napakabilis ng pag-spread ng virus na ito. Welcome my dear friends 
Tita Jeje Kizon from all the way from Antipolo. Good morning. Kuya Gilbert Lazaro, Tito Vlogs, good morning. Watching from Cavite, Jason Matias. Good morning, Jason. Okay. Let's move over to the Manila Standard. Hi, nako. Manila Standard headline: Cebu Dance Fest draws flack. Ano po na yari sa Cebu? Meron pong nagprosesyon, hindi naman pala. Merong nagmalasinulog na dance sa isang barangay that's considered to be a COVID-19 hotspot. Ay nako, ano ba naman 'yan? The news however states that There were only over 10 people who were out in the streets dancing. It's also easy to be alarmed if you're just looking at photos. It looks like it was an entire procession going on. Hindi naman pala siya talagang totoong napakalaking procession. But still wrong, mali pa rin. Dahil naglabasan yung mga tao to watch it. Kahit na sampung tao lang yung naglabasan para sumayaw to honor their patron saint. Still, if you invited people to congregate in an area where you should not be out in the streets, you should be hiding in your homes because it's a hot spot. It's a hot spot. You should not be out there. Yun ang problema doon. So, uh, iniimbestigahan na po yan. Hindi daw po alam ng barangay kapitan. Pero the, the concerned authorities are investigating that. Also in the headlines of the Philippine or the Manila Standard, it also says there, nasan yung aking music, that... It also mentions the news from the World Health Organization, but like I mentioned earlier, Tita Lin Lin, Pampanga raises alarm because according to the governor there, there are 25 new cases in just a span of 10 days. Na hindi naman ganong kabilis yung pag-akyat doon sa kanilang lugar, sa Pampanga. But naturally, as people go out in the streets to norm, try to normalize their lives and find jobs, it's going to expose them to this virus. And if they're exposed to this virus and they don't observe minimum health precautions, anong minimum health precautions? Wear a mask, social distancing, mag, maghugas ng kamay, Umiwas, kung pwedeng umiwas. That's the only way we can avoid that. To those who have not caught the episode on how we can fight this COVID as we ease up the lockdowns, I would like to invite you to go to the YouTube channel of Mark Your Day and catch that episode where I talk about uh, what the Japanese did. Mas marami pong Japanese kaysa Pilipino. Mas crowded po ang Tokyo kaysa Metro Manila. Pero paano na konti lang ang cases sa Tokyo na napakarami sa Metro Manila? What are the lessons we can learn from the Japanese? Catch that episode 2 of Mark Your Day. Please go and share that to your friends so they will be warned and they would know what to do. Just a quick reminder what we were talking about. But I, I would still suggest you go there. Wear your mask in public transport. Don't talk. Don't take your phones. Don't open your mouth. You should not be eating, drinking, or smoking in public. 
so that you don't spread the saliva all over the place. You don't dispose your trash all over the place. Eat where you're supposed to eat, then dispose. Drink and then dispose. Smoke, then dispose. Some of the lessons from the Japanese. I hope you could catch that episode. Yan po yung ating mga balita sa umagang ito. Again, I would like to greet our friends. Palakpakan po natin yung aking uh, dearest coach, si Dean Coach Henry Daot. Alala niyo yung aking mga, fad, uh, yung nabanggit ko sa Father's Day special, yung aking mga role models and mga tatay na who helped shape uh, who I am today. One of them is that guy there, Henry Cordero Daut. You can check him out and his Facebook account. He does a lot of good things for kids in the Philippines and a lot of wonderful things for our um, citizens. Hindi ko pala nabasa yung aking gustong basahin kanina, Mami Trisha, yung Hindi ko pala nabasa yung aking... Um, nasaan na ba yung aking verse for the day? Ah, sa news pa pala yun. Before the news pa pala yun. Ayun. So, sa aking camera before the news, all right. Ano ba yung aking verse for the day? Encouragement para sa ating lahat, okay? Ito po yun. Tingnan po natin ito, okay? Before we go and um, move over to the news. Okay. And before we go over and mo- read my, my what's interesting today. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Okay? A gentle answer turns away wrath but a harsh word stirs up anger yung manner by which we talk can trigger anger but the gentle word will uh, will calm people down a gentle answer turns away wrath pinapalayo mo yung galit but a harsh word stirs up anger yan po ang ating words of uh, encouragement sa umagang ito which leads me to a discussion on what's interesting. Okay, what's interesting, we jump off from that verse and this is a point where you could invite your friends to join in the discussion. But I'd like to talk about how we should manage conflict in our homes because we're on quarantine we're locked down in our spaces, in our homes. We don't go out as much. So we spend a great amount of time with our families. And when you spend a great amount of time with your families, the chances of having conflict or disagreement will be higher simply because you're together. Walang away kung hindi naman kayo magkasama. If uh, you left the house at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, pasok ka, wala ka na sa bahay the whole day, and then you meet your family naman sa... Sa gabi na, so your exposure to them is what? Two to three hours. So, konti nga lang yung conflict doon, di ba? Konti lang. Pero dahil magkasama tayo the whole day, almost the entire day nagkakatitigan kayo, ano ang gagawin natin para peaceful yung ating pamamahay at masaya? Gusto nyo bang masaya ang pamamahay? Gusto nyo bang peaceful ang pamamahay? So it's important for us to learn how to manage conflict, okay? Ang bagay na ito, I studied this when I was in my early years of law practice. When During my early years of practice, I realized that many cases are not supposed to be filed in court. I realized na itong mga kasong ito, mas maganda talaga itong hindi pinapile sa korte at dahil finile ito sa korte, mas nakakalala siya, it worsens the situation rather than solves it. It makes the relationship crumble rather than fixes it. So ano po yung mga kasong ito? Okay, before I continue, merong special request si Jason Matias. I hope you can do one episode to discuss your opinion on the quality and status of the political opposition in our country right now. Are they there now just to, for the sake of criticizing? Okay, <laughs> yung quality of political opposition request ni uh, Jason Matias. I might not specifically talk about the political opposition, but maybe one of these days, dahil inaral ko po ito dati, I might talk about how, in fact, a good balance of 
threat tatawagin natin. Dapat may balance ng mga oposisyon. So yung ating party system, yung ating political system. Who knows? We will talk about. Thank you for your suggestion, Jason. Mabalik tayo dun sa aking gustong sabihin. Uh, I I was a lawyer early on. Uh, when I was a lawyer in around 2005, that's when I started uh, law practice around 2005 because although I became a lawyer in the early 2000s, 2002, the first three years of my being a lawyer was spent in government. I was in government. So in 2005, I realized that maraming kaso na dapat hindi na finafile. Ano ito? Kaso ng awayan sa mana. Pag finail yan sa kaso, magkakagulo. At hindi siya nakakatulong masyado. Kaso na may kinalaman sa pera, mas magandang isettle na lang yan kaysa mag-file ng kaso. At marami pang mga ibang civil disputes. Hindi siya criminal cases but civil disputes. So, when I was trying to see the need for greater peace and harmony, sabi ko, hindi ako marunong. I I lack the ability to help settle conflict. Buti na lang nabigyan ako ng opportunity ng Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches, yung PCEC. At pinadala ako kasama ng iba pang mga abogado at leader sa Pilipinas sa Amerika para mag-train on peacemaking or conciliation and mediation. So nag-aral po kami doon. Nag-aral kami sa Minneapolis for, for several, I, uh, I think 10 days or so. And we went to a lot of OJTs or uh, simulation exercises. Pagkabalik ko dito sa Pilipinas, I put up a professional conciliation and mediation service. Ibig sabihin, we offered the service na instead na i-file sa korte, ayusin na lang natin dito at pag-usapan na lang. Okay? So coming from that experience of helping families settle conflict, Marami po ako natutunan kung paano talaga ma-avoid ang conflict at ma hindi siya mag-escalate to a point na masisira yung pamilya, masisira yung relationships. Kaya kung gusto nyo po na matutunan na maging peaceful ang inyong mga pamamahay, ako, I would like to encourage you to share this to our friends. Okay? So if you haven't shared this yet, this discussion, go ahead and share this. Now, so today I will be sharing to you what's interesting about conflict and how to avoid them. I would try to be as practical as possible. I will try to be as, as layman as possible para hindi siya... Mahirap ipasa para hindi siya mahirap i-share sa ating mga anak. So, I will just be sharing with you five things that I believe is absolutely important for all of us to learn. Tatay, nanay, mga anak, imagine if you teach this to your children now. Your kids will go out to the schools and to their workplaces equipped to manage the issues equipped to manage the conflicts in their lives para they can build better relationships. And we know that the Grant and Gluex study told us that na kapag mas maganda yung relationships mo, mas magiging successful ka. Ganun lang kasimple. Pag maayos ang relationships mo, mas magiging successful ka. Kaya sa umagang ito, let's learn how to build a peaceful home. Okay? At dito sa bahay, nagsisimula yung lessons natin on how to build a peaceful home. Bago po ako magsimula, kakain muna ako ng ah, pakasarap na carrot cake courtesy of my sponsor, Little Cakes Factory. Little Cakes Factory. Tingnan po muna natin. Little Cakes Factory. Yung Little Cakes Factory ang aking sponsor. Little Cakes Factory, thank you very much for sponsoring this morning's episode. Mm -hmm. Okay, welcome to Kuya Randy Campos, watching from Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Palakpakan po natin si Kuya Randy. Okay, how to build a peaceful home. Are you ready? Thank you for watching Kuya Randy. Number one. If you want to build a peaceful home, teach your kids this. 
teach your kids this and teach one another this. Kapag meron kang disagreement, kapag meron kang konting ag- um, awayan sa bahay or hindi pagkakasundo, the first thing you do is to really, number one, slow things down. Slow down. Slow down, slow down the discussion, slow yourself down, slow down the people. Don't allow it to pick up momentum. Bakit? Kapag meron kang disagreement, what you're really fighting is what you call the fight or flight response instinct. It's the instinct that will go fight or run away. Either fight or walk out, slam the door. Fight, say a bad word, and then go drive the car or go out of the house. Yan po ang iingatan natin. Kasi kapag merong disagreement and conflict, nati-trigger yung instinct ng tao at sasabog yan in a few seconds. Sasabog yan in a few seconds if you don't slow it down, if you don't calm down. Watching from Surigao City, my dear friend Claire, brother Claire, So, slow things down. Now, ang pinakabugso ng galit will happen within the first usually 30 seconds. 30 seconds, babantayan mo yun. Once you perceive it, the temptation to snap, to react, to get mad, to st- sabog will happen within that first period. So, the first and most important lesson turo natin sa ating mga anak, slow things down. Don't talk. Don't react. Don't do anything. Just pause and slow down. Yun po yung unang-una. Ano po yun? If you're trying to follow this, if you type it down the comment section, you will remember it better. Number one is to slow things down. Mm-hmm. Number two. Okay. I'm meaning ko. Ako, when I went to the US, I thought that studying this course will make me a better mediator lawyer. After I took that course, I discovered that I became somehow a better person, a better husband. Kasi mainitin ang aking ulo. Kasi ako, I, am, I, am, I can be very emotional and I can be very emphatic with my words. I can weaponize my language. Yun yung aking isa sa aking weakness. Kasi while it is my gift to communicate in a good way, it is also my weakness to communicate in a really negative and hurtful manner. And that's why having a lesson on how to do this Cerebrally, meaning pinag-iisipan mo yung conflict, hindi ka lang react ng react. Makakatulong po talaga. So, bantayan yung first 30 seconds to one minute. Slow things down. Huwag magpapadala dun sa fight or flight response. Slow things down. That's the first tip. Okay? Number two. Number two. If you have questions, by the way, please just type them down in the comment section below so that I can respond to them. Type them down and then I will click your question. I will make it appear on the screen and I, we can talk about it. Okay? Number two, a practical tip. Kapag merong issue, merong disagreement, whether at home or sa trabaho, ito yung magandang gawin. Okay? Ang pangalawa is this. Ask questions. Avoid accusations. Number one is you slow things down. Pangalawa, you ask questions. You manage it by asking questions, not by giving statements, conclusions, and accusations. So kapag merong conflict, magtanong ng magtanong ng magtanong. Okay, sabihin mo, Mark, ano ba naman yun? Para kang investigador. Para ka ba <laughs> investigador? Hindi naman yun parang investigador. Ang ibig sabihin kasi, kapag nagtatanong ka, you're triggering the brain. You're asking a question, so you're waiting for a response. It's your brain that's working. Because what you want to do, kapag merong sitwasyon, turuan natin yung bawat isa, turuan natin yung mga bata, mag-isip rather than mag-feel. Mag-analyze rather than mag-conclude. So that's why the practical tip is magtanong, 
Ask questions, my friends. Don't just hurl accusations. Okay? Don't just hurl judgments. Bakit? Itong diprensya. Kapag ikay nagtatanong, itong gumagana. Kapag ikaw ay nagkukonclude, it's already forming a conviction in you. May kaskarga ng puso yon, May karga ng conviction yon, May karga ng emotion yon. At pag may karga ng emotion yon, that will escalate the situation. But while you're just asking questions, hindi ka pa naghuhusga. Hindi ka pa nagdidesisyon. Hindi ka pa nang aakusa. That's why, number one, slow it down. Number two, ask questions, my friends. Okay. What are good questions to ask? What are good questions to ask? Here are three good questions to ask. Three ba? Four. Okay. Number one question na maganda, practice nyo to ha. Kapag meron issue, ang una dapat tanong, what happened? What happened? Kahit napasigaw yan, mas okay pa rin yan. Well, like for example, I ask, what happened? Anong nangyari? Mas okay pa rin yan kaysa, alam nyo, ganitong nangyari no? Ito yung ginawa nyo. Big difference, right? Asking what happened, even if you have an idea of what happened, kahit na may idea ka na kung anong nangyari, kapag nagtanong ka pa rin ng what happened, gagana yung utak mo. Pangalawang question. Ang pangalawang question is, so what do you want to happen? So what do you want to happen? Doon sa kausap mo, anong nangyari? At ang pangalawang question is, so anong, anong gusto mong mangyari dito sa sitwasyon? Then you will know the position of the person you're talking with. Pangatlong good question. Bakit mo ito gusto mangyari? What happened? What do you want to happen? Why do you want this to happen? And number four question is this. What is the benefit of this? How will this be good for us? Apat na tanong. What happened? Anong gusto mo mangyari? Bakit mo ito gustong mangyari? At pang-apat is, anong beneficyo nito sa atin? Paano ito makakaganda? Paano ito makakatulong? Okay? So, ask questions, avoid accusations. Keep the issue in your head, not in your heart. Diba, meron kang naririnig na kasabihan sa mga, sa mga manginginom na yung alcohol daw, wag mong ilagay sa utak, ilagay mo lang sa tiyan. That's the kwan sa mga manginginom. Sino yung mga manginginom, di ba? Yan daw yung mga sabi ng mga manginginom na keep it in your stomach, don't let it go to your head. Sa issue naman ng conflict, keep it in your head, not in your heart. Keep it in your head, not in your heart. Okay? So ask questions. The more you ask questions, the more you keep it in your head and not in your heart. All right. Again, if you have questions, my friends, if you have questions, just type them down. Good morning, Ate Elma Ropeta and our friends from Diwa Publishing. Okay? Number three point. Okay? Number three point. Oh, backtrack mo muna ako dito. Kasi ito, pag slow down na ito, pag nag-slow down ka, yung tao na willing na mag-fight or flight, then, mabibigyan mo siya ng chance na kumalma din. So, kung mag-slow down ka, magsuslow down din yung kausap mo. Kahit na larga siya ng larga, kung ikaw nag-slow down, hindi, wala siyang kausap. Which applies yung ating lesson kanina na uh, uh, a gentle word. Parang prevents wrath and yung atang an angry response elicits um, anger okay so yun yung pangalawa ayun yung uh, una yung avoid slow down ask questions pangalawa at ang pangatlo kapag mayroong conflict or crisis or disagreement ang dapat mindset natin diyan opportunity ito for example itong pandemic Itong quarantine, itong COVID-19. Kapag inisip natin ito na this is malaking dagok, malaking problema, malaking issue, totoo naman. But if you think of it as an opportunity, then you could see good things come out of it. 
at hindi lang siya puro negative. Okay? Kasi, ganito, mahirap ba itong pandemic sa negosyo? Yes. Challenge ba ito sa mga empleyado? Yes. Pero pag umuwi ka sa bahay, may halimbawa ni Trisha, kung ang usapin lang ay bayarin ng mga business loans, kung ang usapin lang kung paano ka magbabayad ng tuition, kung ang usapin lang kung paano mo imamanage yung cash mo, kung ang usapin lang ay kung paano mo masusustain yung mga empleyado mo, ano yun? Those are what you call challenges. Challenge lang yun. Challenges lang yun. Opportunity lang yun na malampasan mo at ma-prove mo na kaya mong lampasan yung mga challenges na yun. But, but, the moment you start fighting, you transform a challenge into a problem. Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. Magkasama tayo sa bahay ngayon on quarantine. Hindi madali ang buhay. Hindi siya madaling kumita. Nahihirapan ang maraming tao. Pero ano yan? Problema ba yan o challenge lang yan? Isipin natin that that's an opportunity, that's a challenge, that's not a problem. But if we begin fighting, then it becomes a problem. So the way we think about it will guide our actions. Will guide our actions. The way we think about it will guide our emotions and our thoughts. Okay? Wag isiping problema, isiping challenge. Wag isiping problema, isiping opportunity. Kasi pag puro problema, 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 posibleng humantong sa away, posibleng humantong sa hindi pagkakaintindihan because you're thinking of it as a, a, pro, a problem rather than opportunity. Here's my suggestion to you. Practical tip again. Ano yung ating practical tip again? Mahilig ako sa practical tip Ulitin natin. Practical tip again. Para maisip nyo na hindi ito problema, opportunity, this is an exercise that helps. Okay? Ano ang oppor- ano, paano mo matra-transform yung pag-iisip nyo na problema, na, hin- na challenge ito, opportunity, rather than a problem? Alam nyo anong pwede nyo gawin? Isulat nyo sa blackboard. Isulat nyo sa whiteboard. Magtawag kayo ng meeting ng pamilya. Again, direct the last time, isama nyo kung maintindihan na ng mga bata. Sama nyo yung mga bata. Sulat nyo sa whiteboard. Project it on a screen. Kasi pag sinulat nyo sa whiteboard, you're taking it out of your chest and putting it on a wall. You're taking it out of your emotions and writing it on a wall. Once you write it on a wall, your mind will read it and your mind will try to find a solution for it and analyze it. Pero kapag kinikimkim mo sa puso mo na ganun, itong mga problema and issues, posible kang sumabog, posibleng mag ito ng conflict sa ating mga pamamahay. Okay? So, think of it as an opportunity. Don't allow it to become a problem. Keep it as a challenge. Ito, meron akong ka-Bible study dati. Manghang-mangha ako sa kanya. Sabi ko, bro, paano mo nasusurvive yun? Kasi ito hinahabol ng maraming bangko. Ang dami niyang utang, magsasara na yung kanyang kumpanya. Pero, pag nag, nag, nakakausap namin, when we talk to him, he looks so relaxed. Sabi niya, dasa lang ako sa Panginoon, hindi ko naman kontrolado. Tinamaan kasi ito siya nung economic crisis around 2007, if I'm not mistaken. Sabi niya, bro, alas stress, sarado na ang bangko. Bakit hindi ako matutulog sa gabi? Eh, sarado na yung bangko. Tulog na yung manager. So, meaning he's choosing to think of it as a challenge, not really a problem. He's choosing to think of it as an opportunity. Alam niyo nangyari? Nabenta niya yung kumpanya niya to an international company. He was hired to manage the same company that he used to own. Naging okay buhay niya. But, How did he do it? He pinag-isipan. He hurdled the challenge. Hindi siya nalugmok. Hindi siya nag-resort to awayan. Again, if it's just a challenge, kaya yon. Pero pag nag-away ng mag-asawa, nag-away ng mga mag-anak, nag-away ng magkakaibigan, magiging problema na yon. So keep it as an opportunity and a challenge. 
Not a problem, my friends. Number four. Number four. Okay. Depende sa issue sa bahay. Merong mga issue na seryoso. Meron namang mga issue at karamihan, most of the issues are not really so serious. So, ang ibig kong sabihin dito sa number four na ito, kung minor issues at minor offense, wag nang palakihin. Hindi na kailangan pag-usapan. Hindi na kailangan palakihin pa. It doesn't mean that you did not respond that you lost. You just let peace reign. Question from my good friend Claire. Is it good that every moment we had a quarrel, I always managed to cool down first, even if it is her fault? Ah, okay. That's a good question. Question from Claire. Is it good that every moment we had a quarrel, I always managed to cool down first, even if it is her fault? Okay. Ang maganda niyan, kapatid. Kung merong unang lumamig, merong taong pwedeng mag-facilitate ng discussion. Hindi naman ibig sabihin na kung sino yung may kasalanan, yun yung dapat lumuhod kaagad. Because it is also a question of personality and a question of maturity. Kasi posibleng at that moment in her life, Posibleng hindi pa siya ganun kagaling mag-manage ng emotions niya, ikaw muna yung kumalma, tapos pagkalmado na kayo, mag-uusap na kayo ng mga issues, magtatanong ka na ngayon ng questions, mangutana na ka sa mga pangutana, makapag-suggest na kanya, yung ani ba, yung ani atong istoryahan. Meaning, the person will slowly mature and calm down and learn to manage their emotions. Okay, ito ha, meron akong itchichismis, meron akong kilala. Mabait, Mabait itong asawa, mabait na negosyante, pero actually, mainitin din yung ulo. Mainit yung ulo, madaling magalit, uh, mood swings, kasi young guest dito sa kanila, boss na boss ito sa pamilya niya, walang pwedeng sumagot dito dati pa. Pero as she matured in her life, ang galing ng kumalma. Napakabait na. Hindi na masyadong reactive. Hindi na madaling mag-snap sa mga sitwasyon. Marunong nang kumalma. So bro, Claire, okay lang yan. Kung ikaw na unang magkalma, it doesn't mean you don't talk about it later. You will still talk about it later. Good morning to our friends watching from over the country. HR leader of Cagayan de Oro, Roda, maing buntag Rod, sa imong akong barkadang, akong amigong uh, Eric Arimao, o akong mga amigo, mga pagaritano sa nasalanaw, good morning to everyone. Okay, overlook minor issues now. Kapag hindi naman nakaka-apekto talaga sa, sa pamilya ng in a big way, Kapag hindi naman nakaka-apekto talaga sa future ng kapatid, pagkibit balikat mo na 'yan. Let it go. Sabi nga ng aking ng wise words from the Bible, no. It is wise for a man to overlook an offense. Overlook an offense. Hindi na kailangan palakihin pa. Hindi na kailangan. Meron na naman ako i-chismis ha. Meron na naman ako i-chismis. Meron na akong kakilala. Napakagaling na baker. Napakagaling na professional. Pero nung pinangasawa ko siya, ang hindi ko alam, or hindi ako naniniwala, or hindi ako naniwala, in denial siguro ako, na ito siya, palakpakan po muna natin, ito aking blind item, ha? Meron akong blind item. Hindi pala marunong magluto. Hindi marunong magluto. Ayaw pumuntang palengke. Ayaw tumungtong sa palengke. Madumi daw, mabaho. So, ito, hindi marunong magluto. Ayaw magluto. Pag merong mga events, nag-order lang, nagpapadeliver lang, medyo sumasama yung loob ko, pero alam nyo, ang ginawa ko, hindi ko talaga sinumbat. Hindi. Nagdasal lang ako sa Lord. Nagdasal lang ako sa Lord ng matagal na panahon. Nagdasal lang ako ng nagdasal. Ayaw talaga magluto. 
Ayo mamalengke. Alam nyo? After many years, nung nag-midlife crisis, biglang nagluto. Buhay ang ating Panginoon. Binabago ang puso at isipan ng ilan. Biglang nagluto. Biglang ngayon, namamalengke na. Pero namamalengke, hindi pa rin sa palengke. Namamalengke sa Yaya Go. Ni Tita si Lazaro. Doon namamalengke sa Yaya Go. Kung ayaw niyo bumili sa palengke, puntahan niyo yan si Tita si Lazaro na sa comment section. Click niyo yung page niya. Sila ang mamamalengke para sa inyo. Hindi ako nagreklamo. Hindi ko sinumbat. Hindi ko ginawang issue. Ang tao, kapag hindi mo ginajudge, nagbabago. Kapag hindi mo ginajudge, kusang mag improve Pero the more that you judge a person, ganyan ka talaga, kahit na maliit na bagay, babanata mo ka agad, hindi na magbabago, titigas yung puso. Grace, mercy, love helps a person grow. Judgment, conclusions that are unfair, eh kung ayaw niya magluto, eh di ako, kaya in the first few years, ay, sorry, ako, ako ba? O ako talaga magluto. Kaya in the first few years, ako talaga nagluluto. Ngayon, sobrang galing na niya magluto. Okay? So kilala niyo siguro itong blind, tem, blind item na ito. Mahal na mahal ko ito. Ngayon, sobrang sarap na po niyang magluto. All right. Overlook minor issues, wag nang palakihin. All right, napakaganda po ng ating discussion dahil maraming blind item. Last and definitely not the least. Okay, number five. Lauoy daw ang kailangan lutuin. Marunong nang maglauoy. Manoy Randy. Number five. Tip. Learn to dialogue and mediate. Okay. Ang pag-manage ng issue at conflict is a skill. It's a skill. Mat- matututunan. Pwede siyang maituro. In fact, we have been teaching this in the corporate world for many, many, many years. At meron siyang paraan kung paano ituro. Um, Trisha, request nga ako ng libro, yung conflict management book. Meron akong book. Akin yan, yung blue. Yes, thank you. Ay, hindi pala yan. Public speaking pala yan. Wala na ba tayo nun? Meron akong sinulat na libro on peacemaking. Pwede nyong basahin yon. Pero wala na ata kaming copies nun. So it ran out of print. Kaya magpapaprint muna ako kay Tita Netnet Valencia ng Venezina. Huh? And, and, and the name of the company? Anong name ng company ni Netnet? Impress ka. Magpapaprint mo na ako nung book na yon. I actually wrote a book so you can learn how to dialogue and mediate. Pero naubusan na po ng print because I sold that specifically during the alumni homecoming of Saints ko. So it ra- I ran out of copies. But as soon as we're ready with that, I let you know how to uh, uh, get hold of that book so you can learn how to dialogue. And negotiate. It's important for us to commit to a skill, but there are many books around na pwede niyong basahin. So those are the five things, my friends. Did you enjoy that? Did you learn something today? Slow down. Avoid the fight or flight response. Number two, ask questions. Manage issues by asking questions, not by hurling accusations. Keep it in your head, not in your heart. Number three, Keep it as an opportunity and a challenge. Don't transform it into a problem. Number four, overlook. Huwag nang palakihin lahat. Manahimi ka na lang. Gayahin natin si Claire. Kumalma ka na lang. Kahit na hindi ikaw may kasalanan, ikalma mo na lang sarili mo. Finally, number five, learn to dialogue and mediate. Those are the five things, my friends, that we have uh, learned from our experience and broadcast na daw sabi nung aking boss dito kasi and broadcast na daw kasi baka merong mga tinatamaan dun sa aking blind item nag-enjoy ba kayo dun sa aking blind item ha napakaganda nung aking blind item no so wag manghusga easy lang manage your words manage your thoughts okay um, after i attended that seminar ito sa totoo lang hindi kami masyado nag-aaway 
umiinit pa rin yung ulo ko a few times. Umiinit pa rin yung ulo ni Mrs. a few times. Pero, hindi siya regular. Because, issues should stay in the head, not in the heart. Okay? Issues should be discussed. And use a whiteboard, write things down. Okay. If you want to learn more about this topic, buy the book. It's not yet available. Sorry, I have nothing to sell to you. Or visit us here in Marikina and we can talk about these things over coffee, over cupcake, or over steak. Or over steak. Okay? Mm, that's part of growing up though, sabi ni <laughs> Sabi ni Ma'am Linette Hi Ma'am Linette Masayon Good morning Narinig din daw ni Ma'am Linette yung, yung blind item na yan During our session sa EdCop Yes I did this seminar for EdCop I'm, Please say hi to all our friends from EdCop Ma'am Linette I continue to think about you And I hope that uh, the company is coping in this situation What's EdCop by the way my friends? EdCop is Engineering Development Corporation of the Philippines. They're one of the biggest and the most trusted, the longest serving engineering consulting firms in the country. They built the dams, the dikes, the the power plants in this country. They even designed BGC. Yung BGC na yan, wala yung BGC na yan kung wala yung EDCOP. Palakpakan po natin si Ati Lynette and our brothers and sisters from EDCOP for helping build this country. Ngayon, sila din po ang tumutulong sa mga infrastructure projects ng gobyerno. Okay? Now, let's move on. It's 8.53, uh, 7 minutes. I promised you I will talk about I will talk about what's trending. In the news item today, sa, I'm not sure if it was Philippine Star or Philippine Daily Inquirer, that many... Kids from private schools in Metro Manila are reporting cases of sexual harassment. Bata na babae o lalaki na haras ng mga teacher o mga kaeskwela sa mga private schools sa Metro Manila. And I believe this would this is not just happening in private schools, it might be happening as well in public schools and so today let's talk about this issue this trending topic of sexual harassment okay ano po itong sexual harassment ikukuwento ko po sa inyo ano po ang elements and as you listen to this remember these two elements and share it with your children because it's possible that they're going through harassment already without them knowing about it Okay? Posible kasing isipin ng mga bata na sexual harassment siya kung talagang na-touch na sila, pag nahipuan na sila. Hindi po sexual harassment kapag nahipuan na sila kasi mas malala na po yun. Ibang crime po yun. It would fall under acts of lasciviousness, even attempted rape, etc. Ang sexual harassment ay kakaiba po siya because it is really more psycho-emotional rather than physical. Okay? Basta remember ang tao, ang pinapangalagaan natin sa tao. That's why this is common not just for girls. This is also common among boys. Okay? Because a person is made up of his physical body and his psycho-emotional being. Yung kanyang pag-iisip at kanyang puso. Posibleng hindi ka defiled, hindi ka naharas physically, but your brain and your heart have been defiled and harassed and abused. Kaya, ano po ang sexual harassment? Ito po ang dalawang key elements ng sexual harassment. I'm simplifying things, okay? I'm not speaking as a lawyer, law professor, although I can do that. I'll try to simplify things. Number one. Ang first element ng sexual harassment ay ito. Dapat merong a form of moral ascendancy. Okay? Ano ang form ng moral ascendancy? Ang moral ascendancy can be built into the situation, meaning teacher-student. Moral ascendancy, clear. 
boss, subordinate. Moral ascendancy, clear. Malino yon. That's moral ascendancy established simply because of the positions of people. Counselor, counselee. Doctor, patient. Lawyer, client. Malinaw po yung moral ascendancy. So kapag merong moral ascendancy, may first element. Nagiging medyo blurred kung halimbawa hindi naman talaga mataas yung posisyon ng iba. Halimbawa, classmates. Pero <coughs> in this class, ito yung presidente. Or ito yung pinaka leader ng clique or ng grupo doon. At ikaw yung pwede kang ma-outcast. Pwede ka nilang i-ostracize. Ano ba yung ostracize sa Tagalog? Pwede bang... Basta yung magiging out ka. So, meron kang moral structure. Kasi yung mga relationships niyan, merong structure, may hierarchy. Merong mga queen bee, merong mga hari-harian, merong mga ganun sa given na situation. Whether co-employees or co-students, magka-same level. Pero merong people with some ascendancy over others. Okay? That's the first element. Moral ascendancy. Okay. Ang pangalawang element, ito. If there is a request, a demand, or a requirement for sexual favor. Okay? So, ano yung pangalawan? Pangalawa? O, oh, tama si Tita Mitzi. Yung uh, ostracized daw is kapag pwede ka nilang i-etsapuera, pwede ka nilang i-out. Kaya magko-comply ka na lang kasi matatakot ka baka ma maet sa puwera ka or you can get ostracized. Kaya yung moral ascendancy bothers your mind and your heart. You feel bullied in your mind and in your heart. Again, there are two realities, the physical and the psycho-emotional. Una, moral ascendancy. Pangalawa, if there is a demand, gawin mo to. If there is a request, pwede bang pakis? Very mild. And uh, hug mo muna ako bago ka namin sama sa barkada. Sexual harassment? In my book, yes. Sexual harassment yon. Teacher, ah, hindi, hindi kita isasama sa grupo. Hug mo muna ako. Kiss mo muna ako. Those things, if there is a request, if there is a demand, if there is a requirement for any sexual favor coming from a person, With moral ascendancy, the person is harassed sexually. So, hindi po kailangan mahipuan, hindi po kailangan mamolest in order for this crime to be committed. Here's another thing. Even if it is a joke, kahit parang joke lang, pero parang, oh, hindi, hug mo muna ako. Kahit na jokingly, in a light environment, kahit na in public, This can be committed. This can be committed. That's why I would encourage parents to teach their children this and to call it out. Call it out. Name it for what it is. Teach the kids to say, no, that's sexual harassment. That's wrong. Don't do that. That's a crime. I will report. Because in many cases, when the person calls it out and calls it for what it really is, oh, joke lang naman, nope. Even if it's a joke, that's sexual harassment. If you call it out <clears throat> and you threaten the person that you will report, there's a likelihood that it can stop. Okay? So, napakahalaga po nung mga elements na yon. So, protektahan natin hindi lang yung physical ng mga bata. Kasi ngayon, posibleng nangyayari sa cellphone. Nadi-desensitize na yung mga bata, yung utak at puso dahil lang sa mga nangyayari dito sa cellphone. Dahil lang sa mga kwentuhan. It's very powerful and it can affect the person's thinking and feeling and emotions and psychological well-being. Mental health, it can affect kung merong mga ganitong pangyayari. That's why it's absolutely important for us to be vigilant to protect our children against sexual harassment. At napakaganda naman na sinasabi ng mga skwelahan that they are also committed to preventing this from happening.
Okay? I hope you enjoyed that discussion. Here's my assignment to parents. Share that to your children. Call your children to a meeting today and inform them of those two elements. Okay? Moral ascendancy, number two element. Demand, request, require. Sexual favor. Even if it's not serious, even if it's a joke, what should they do? Call it out. Name it for what it is. That sexual harassment. Report that sexual harassment to the school officers. Okay, 901. Our closing verse, my friends, for today is this. Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. My brother Claire has good sense. He's slow to anger, or madaling humupa ang galit. That's why be slow to anger the rest of the week, my friends. Control your emotions. Learn to dialogue. Make sure you keep a peaceful home. What are those five things? Slow down. Ask questions. Think of it as an opportunity. Overlook, my friends, and learn to talk. Use a whiteboard. Write issues down. That's the better approach to managing issues at home rather than allowing it to turn into anger and conflict that can break relationships. Keep a peaceful home this week. Thanks very much for joining me today. God bless. Stay healthy. Stay safe. See you again on Wednesday. This is Mark Your Day.